There we go, there's the end of the box of the Browning Automatic 5. Hello folks, what we have here is an original Browning Auto 5 12 gauge shotgun with a 30 inch barrel. Um, this is a buddy's of mine, of mine's gun. Um, <clears throat> his grandfather gave it to him and bought, him, bought it for him when he was uh, an infant. And it's probably at least 35 years old. And it's um, we've already unboxed it once to look at it, but we've never even taken it out of the styrofoam and um, taken it out, you know, taken it out of the box and uh, never been assembled or anything like that. And so I think it's a cool piece of history. I know this was, I believe, it's the second most popular auto loading shotgun in the United States behind the Remington 1100. It was designed by John Moses Browning and. Uh, the 1890s, um, and I believe it was patented in 1900, and it was uh, built for almost almost 100 years, um, and up until uh, 1998, um, and it was uh, <clears throat> recoil operated, um, uh, very cool, and it was a huge, <clears throat> hugely successful gun, and I believe the Browning has now reincarnated this gun, and they've, you know, they're making it again, like a newer version of it with all new interior guts and kind of the same humpback design. Uh, but it was, uh, I know there's, <clears throat> you know, there was millions of these made and floating all over the place for, you know, almost a hundred years. So I just thought it was pretty cool. I kind of like history and especially finding something like this. When I first, he told me he had this, uh, I was really impressed and I was like, <clears throat> wow, that's pretty cool. So, um, let's see, we have a hunter's pocket guide in here. I um, mean, you can just tell I'm, I'm guessing looking at this, this is from the seventies sometime. Um, never been opened. Um. Some sort of a browning, uh, I'm guessing this is the manual in here for the gun itself. And you can see it's never been open. <clears throat> it's all sealed up. Uh, but pretty cool. Um, let's just put these out of way. And here's the shotgun itself. Um, <clears throat> it's a 12 gauge, 30 inch barrel. But this is the way it originally came shipped from browning. You can see that beautiful wood on there. Um, you know, the 30 inch barrel down here. And again, this is a... Uh, it's, it's just, it's a blow, you know, it's not a gas operated gun, it's a blowback gun. So I'd be curious to know, <clears throat> you know, the reliability of this and, you know, how this would function with, uh, with a lot of shells. I have a Remington 1100 and it's very finicky. It only wants to cycle full power loads. It won't uh, cycle field stuff, but it's, um, you know, I'd be curious to know how, you know, how this thing cycles, how, um, how this cycles stuff. Um, so let's, um, <clears throat> But that's it right there. All right, so here it is right here in the box. We'll try to get a close-up here. It looks like here's a little can of some original oil or something like that that came with the shotgun. Um, I'm not going to take it out. It's not mine. I just wanted to show it to you guys. Um, looks like it's, it's I see a little bit of lube still left in there, not too much. But there's no rust on it. looks like it's been preserved pretty well. See there's some nice uh, scrolling work on there. A um, little bit of lube here or there, which is still good. That wood, that wood is beautiful. I love some of the wood on <clears throat> even my old shotguns, my Remington 1100. That's from the early 70s. My father bought it before I was born. It just has beautiful uh, woodwork on it, you know. And today, for for something like this, you're going to spend, I mean, at least probably a couple grand um, for something this nice. But this is pretty cool. I like the paper. Oh, there we go. Here's the stock right there. I love that checkering there. <clears throat> That's definitely, you can see there's the humpback right there. That's pretty cool. That's the classic <clears throat> Browning Auto A5. They called it, I know one of the nicknames for this gun was the humpback. And I know the new one has a, also has a hump too. And that was very distinguishing for this gun. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a recoil pad on the back there. That's pretty standard. I like that. They're very functional. That'll help you a lot because this is a Magnum gun. This will shoot three inch shells. And you can see it looked like there was a little extra, a couple inches there. I saw that this gun also was made with a 32 inch barrel. I don't even, I'm not even sure if they make shotguns with 32 inch barrels anymore, but um, <clears throat> this one did have it, but this is a 30 inch barrel. And then here's the original, some of the documents that came with it again. And these were just all in there so pretty cool cool piece of history here and um yeah very very neat um i like the way it's preserved in here i mean this has probably been sitting in this case for 30 for at least 35 years and it was in his grandfather's garage just up on the attic and uh 
it looks pretty pretty nice to me museum quality to me but I have a feeling there's a lot of these out there probably even a few others that are unboxed like this that are still in the box yeah very cool there's the cover again Ooh, there we go. I didn't even see that. Let's zoom in on that. Modern rust prevention, browning. Browning Arms Company of Canada. Hmm. Maybe this gun was manufactured in Canada. Could have been. I know that he had John Moses Browning had problems originally um, getting this gun manufactured. And I think Remington built these for a while, and I think they were built by FNN for a while. Um, you know the the manufacturing went around but very cool all right guys thanks for watching appreciate it